NCW Life Channel Sports is proud to bring you the following presentation. In easily to score is Bayer. Schooler comes out right behind us. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Abby's Pizza, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, and Together for Youth. Now, live coverage of high school sports on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. Go, go, go! Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Eastmont High School Wildcats Stadium for tonight's exciting encounter between the Eastmont Wildcats and the Wenatchee Panthers. It's the Battle of the Bridge, soccer style, coming to you live here on NCW Live Channel. I'm Sebastián Moraga. Alongside me, as always, is our soccer expert, Matt Wisen. And Matt, I tell you, the, the storylines abound once again. We have Eastmont coming off some tough matches and some impressive wins. We have Wenatchee coming off some tough matches and impressive wins. We have Eastman with the strong attack. Wenatchee with a strong defense. We have Eastman with the impressive freshman. We have Wenatchee with the impressive freshman. We're going to see something special tonight without a doubt. Very special, yeah. <laughs> I, you, you know, I forgot, Wenatchee's got it. Like a, a recent history of dominance over Eastmont for the last four or five years, un, unbeaten against Eastmont and that chip on the Eastmont shoulder has got to be getting oh, yeah. heavier and heavier so they've got all the motivation in the world to win tonight at home I mean I don't, I don't know other than that where do you start it's, it's gonna be a fun game and, and uh, there's no reason to watch anything else other than, other than this tonight. Absolutely, and a whole bunch of people agree with us. If you don't believe me, try finding a parking spot outside Wildcat Stadium right now. Mighty, mighty difficult. When we come back, we have interviews with both coaches, the keys to the game, the starting lineups, and a whole lot more here on NCW Live Channel. We're glad you're with us. We'll be right back. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine-in style at Highlander Bar & Grill, located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state-of-the-art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill, offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Paul Shalane, our on-site coordinator to schedule your special event. Welcome back to Wildcat Stadium here in East Wenatchee. Next to us is the head coach, of the Wenatchee Panthers, Coach Dennis Tronson. As always, Coach, a pleasure. Yes. Welcome. And well, coming off of a, a, a very well-deserved, very emotional victory against Skyline, it's like out of the frying pan into the fire. Now you got the arch rivals from across the river. Uh, yeah, very much so. Um, but in another sense, it was a match that helped prepare us for the start of Big Nine play, which happens to start tonight. Now, what uh, uh, what are some of the things that you would like to carry on from that Skyline match onto today? The things that work well. I know you, you're a perfectionist. You, you like certain things to be done a certain way. What are some of the things that work well that you would like to see carry on, on against today's uh, opponent? Well, I, I think that the key for us is our possession play through the midfield and finding our two freshman forwards and working those two learning how to work together. Um, it's a little bit of a change because when they play club ball, they do not play together on top. But for us, they're learning how that combination is going to work. And for our seniors that are all behind them, how do we utilize their unbelievable skills to help us succeed? Now, tell me a little bit more about those freshmen, because before the season, we talked and said, well, how are we going to fill the shoes of a Tyler Weiser and a Marcos Bravo? And I'm not saying that they're there yet. Not at all. Not at all, sir. But. Uh, it looks like you might have a bit of an answer here. Well, they're they're entirely different style than the two former players who both broke the school record or tied it <laughs> and last year and helped us be the leading scoring team in the state. 
But that being said, they bring a different set of skills that, um, you know, uninitiated, no experience type of play where they just get out there and just play the game with passion. Absolutely. What kind of uh, uh, opponent are you facing today in, uh, in Eastman? We ha I haven't seen them yet this year. Uh, what what will, do they bring to the table? You know, after watching them live a couple matches and then on tape against Newport, uh, they're very similar to us. They're very, very similar system of play. And just like us, they have a couple freshmen in their starting lineup. And they have outstanding players all across the board. And we, we just look for, you know, told the guys it's going to be who doesn't make a mistake is going to come out on top. And I would not be surprised this match goes overtime into shootouts. All right. Mr. Wisen, the show is yours. So, uh, again, congrats on your uh, well-deserved win over Skyline. And... Um, I, that night, though, you had a few players that were out sick and, and well, maybe a little sore. How are they doing tonight? Um, we are healthy for the players that are here. We're missing our foreign exchange student who had his parents fly in unannounced, and he got taken to uh, Hawaii for rehab oh, on his no. hamstring. I know it's terrible, but that's where he's at right now, uh, recouping. He's kind of adjusting to our system in the Netherlands. He trained on Wednesday, played on Sunday. And this going every day of the week, intense, playing two, three times a week. Had taken a little toll on his body, so I think it'll be a good break for him. Plus, he gets to see his parents he hasn't seen for seven weeks. The rest of the boys really miss him not being here. He brings that international flavor to the team and has really become a silent leader in training and in matches. That's great. Well, as, as always, good luck. And um, I, I look forward to seeing a, a, a game tonight, which I hear both teams are are pretty healthy and, and ready to go. So it should be very entertaining. Yes. And it's going to be a dandy for sure. When we come back, we have an interview with Vidal Hurtado, head coach of the Eastmont Wildcats. You won't want to miss it. This is NCW Live Channel. Don't go away. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Hi, my car's making a funny noise. Not a problem. We'll take care of you. Global Car Care's technicians are ASE master techs and well-versed in the more refined methods of vehicular diagnostics. Number three piston and rings have a slight loss of compression, down to 108 pounds. Your transmission is slipping. You're going to need a service. Looks like you're all set. These guys? They're good. Oh, and your spare is flat. Global Car Care, Wenatchee's top shop. Welcome back to Wildcat Stadium here in East Wenatchee. Next to us is the head coach of the Eastmont Wildcats, Vidal Hurtado. Coach, as always, a pleasure, sir. Thank you. And judging by why we can hear and see from the JV match, the varsity match has a lot to live up to. Yeah, and it won't be no different from any years past, so <laughs> I think it'll, it's an exciting match. We have uh, a good team in Wenatchee with defensively, and we have great offensive players on our side, so I think it'll be a battle on both ends. Uh, it's a matter who can, who can hold out for the 80 minutes. Now, one of the things that we asked the coach for uh, Wenatchee, Coach Tronson, is what uh, does Eastmont bring to the table? Let me flip that to you. What does Wenatchee bring to the table today? Yeah, they've always been known for their defensive uh, capabilities. It, you don't get, you don't score a lot on them. So the chances that, that we create, we got to make sure that we we execute um, and and convert those to goals. I know that they have a, a couple good freshmen coming in as well and good experience in the midfield. So. Um, I, I foresee a battle in the midfield and uh, on each other's, you know, final third. All so. right, Mr. Wiseman. Yeah, so we talked earlier, and, and um, it looks like both teams are going to be healthy tonight. Mm -hmm. no, no excuse. It's going to be a always an emotional game. Mm -hmm. um, how are your parents, do, are your players, feeling like coming into this game? Are they loose? Are they ready to go? Or are they a little <laughs> tight because they need to get that monkey off their back? Oh, I, I, they're they're ready. That they're motivated. Uh, yes, I, I would say. You know, having to come to school all day thinking about the game, it, it can be tough for them. But I wouldn't say that they are overtly nervous to where they can't they can't control their their emotions. So they're just excited to be here. Uh, it's a match that they love to play. I kind of stopped trying to motivate them for this because you don't need to. Yes, you gotta help them to to 
convert that energy into uh, into positive, um, I guess, momentum for us, well, for lack of a better word. So no, they're excited to be here. Had a pretty um, impressive off season or preseason, I guess, schedule uh, against some pretty good opponents historically. Um, what did you learn in that that preseason? Did any ex any surprises either way, good or bad? Absolutely, I think this has been a really positive preseason for us. Uh, starting starting with our first two non leagues, uh, I had for different reasons seven seven uh, players who identified as being varsity out. Um, and so we had to pull up JV players who were identified as JV players, and uh, they stepped up. I, I was very, very um, pleased with how they played on, on that Friday and Saturday. And then the following week, we got to see Newport here, a very tough team. They made it one round past us last year in, in state, uh, and we, we created great opportunities. We have a creative front. Um, and on Saturday, we went to Mount Sai and won 3-1 to one in a very physical game. But again, our creativity is what kind of led us to the to the victory. Surprises defensively, uh, Kai Pfefferman is is not uh, uh, a center back per se. He's always been kind of on the on the on the outside, and he uh, we know he knew we needed somebody back there, and he stepped up and is doing a phenomenal job of securing our back. Um, Freddie Arredondo is traditionally not a uh, holding mid, and he is doing a fantastic job. Uh, holding the middle there for us and so there's there's a few other surprises a few other uh, freshmen coming in uh, Aaron Leon if you don't know who he is and, and you know soccer then that's probably uh, you need to look him up he's <laughs> he's impressive uh, um, Rogelio is a person I was not expecting to show up and he's he's a starter for us as a freshman uh, left back Giancarlo same thing you know he 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 showed well and he plays up to uh, to the level uh, so and then we have experience from from our previous previous uh, years with a, a great junior class. So it's I'm excited. I'm excited what uh, what's to come in, in, in our season and in our games. That's great. Which, um, what I've noticed, and I think a lot of other people have, this valley is pretty much the powerhouse of the state. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate we can't all be on the same team because then <laughs> it'd be the you know the powerhouse of the the whole region, if not more. So I look forward to tonight's game. Good luck and. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be fun watching you guys this year. Thank you. All right. That was uh, Vidal Hurtado, head coach of the Eastmoon Wildcats. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, 40 minutes of top-notch soccer action for you. Don't go away. When you call Vic's Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Vic's today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. I chose a career at Confluence South because I wanted to help people and I knew there would be opportunities for growth. I started as a medical assistant, but quickly advanced in my career. I received five promotions in only seven years, three of those in management roles. Most organizations don't offer that type of growth. Now, as a career pathway coordinator, I let everyone know, come join Confluence South. Come grow with us. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Welcome back to Eastmont High School, Wildcat Stadium. We're just about ready to start this exciting contest between the Wildcats and their visiting arch rivals from across the river, the Wenatchee Panthers. Let's go right away to the starting lineups. First, the visiting Wenatchee Panthers, coached by Dennis Tronson. 
These are in numeral order, not positional. Number one, goalkeeper Tanner Russell. Number three, Corin Coyer. Number four, Gabriel Mata. Number five, Emmanuel Ocampo. Number six, Ben Merchant, I've been told. Number seven, Alex Sanchez. Number eight, Pierre Vega. Number nine, Anthony Garcia. Number 10, Julian Reyes. Number 14, Kalen Zumak. And number 18, Chani Vega, who, by the way, was the player who scored the first goal against Skyline. I called it for Julian Reyes by mistake. I apologize to him and I apologize to his folks if they're uh, listening. Uh, Eastmont, the home team tonight. Goalkeeper number one, Osvaldo Sanchez. Number two, Kai Pfefferman. Number three, Giancarlo Cordero. Number four, Jesus Villa. Number seven, Benny Mejia. Number eight, Angel Sitio. Number nine, Aaron Leon, number 10, Christian Maldonado, number 11, Edgar Leon, number 14, Rogelio Hernandez, number 15, Freddy Arredondo, coached the Wildcats are by our good friend Vidal Hurtado. Well, we're just about ready to start this contest. They were just finishing the starting lineups for uh, Eastmont down below. Let's have a look at the crowd filling up still. <coughs> bundled up this is going to be a rather cold night once the sun starts going down how's it looking over there matt yeah it'll be a good crowd for sure uh, hopefully some of that body heat rises up in here because we're <laughs> we're about three thousand feet above uh that's right the field level right now that's right and if i sound like i'm still trying to catch my breath i am the air is a little thin and that's it it's a long hike up here that's why i show up an hour and a half earlier because i knew that i need at least a good half hour for for the to recover from the climb back up here. All right, we're gonna have the national anthem, so uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will tell you all about this contest between Eastmont and Wenatchee. One more way that these two teams are even is they have the same record, two, one, and one. Here comes the national anthem. We'll be right back. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance and a revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. I had had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out. The outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My coworkers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health. You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine-in style at Highlander Bar & Grill, located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state-of-the-art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill, offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Call Shalane, our on-site coordinator, to schedule your special event. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant backseat driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. We are back here at Eastmont High School. Mighty big crowd on both ends, or both sides, I should say. All ready to enjoy what will, without a doubt, be something to remember. It always is, Matt Wisen, when these two teams meet. No matter the record, no matter the streak, no matter 
whether there's a senior late in class or a bunch of greenhorns, they go after each other like they've never met before. Yeah, very competitive matchup, and uh, these, these teams always know each other well. They compete mostly on the same club, um, on the same team in the um, in the off season, I guess, for, for high school ball, but in the in the club league season. Um, It'll be it'll be very competitive, and what I was saying earlier, I mean, these are some of the best players around, in, in, in at any level. Uh, I have no doubt that one of these two teams will probably make it, a, if not both, a deep push again in state. Um, and you know, one of these years when uh, WIA finally allows some competition there, we might we might see another winner. Uh, when actually was the last one to win state, um, and I fully expect. Uh, at your Eastmont to, to bring home another state title one of these days. That would be lovely. Now, for Eastmont to come out a, ahead of Wenatchee, what needs to happen, Matt Wisen? Yeah, uh, I think Coach Hurtado is probably right. It's going to be in the midfield. Um, there, but there's going to be some creative, quirky goal scored. And so if you can cap it, if you can control the midfield, that's, that's, that's one. But capitalize on missteps. Um, and, and, and hold your nerves best. I think you're going to come out ahead. And let's flip that question over. Uh, what does Wenatchee need to do to take a win across the river? Well, tr I think try and get momentum because this is a game of momentum. Try and get momentum going, get Eastmont on their, on their heels because Eastmont likes to push out quickly. And if they're on their heels, they're not able to, um, to fully attack. And, and then, and then um, the two midfielders, you're going to see Aaron and Edgar uh, Leon really try and, and run. They're going to have to run so much just to can get that midfield back and that momentum back that if they get tired, um, I mean those are two world class players, and if they can they can run this this game if, if they're allowed to. But if they get super tired in the second half, then we're actually can take advantage of that. Absolutely, we are in uh, business now, folks. Forty two seconds into this one, a quick run down the right side, the the left side. I beg your pardon, for. Wenatchee is interrupted nimbly by the midfield of uh, Eastman. There's that midfield you were talking about. Uh, Matt going right down to business. The long ball looking to surprise Mr. Russell. No dice there. A quick shout out right away to our good friends at TC's Lingers, sponsors of our starting lineups. Let TC's Lingers save you time, money, and labor with their conveyor application. Call for your free estimate today, 509-885-2269. That's 509-885-2269. 2269. TC's Lingers of Wenatchee, your landscape placement company. So we saw Wenatchee take advantage of some transition game against uh, Skyline. When they win the ball back and they immediately brought numbers forward and got that ball up instead of working slowly through or methodically through the thirds. If they can do that against Eastmont, because that's Eastmont's kind of their Achilles heel right now. They've got they have Ben Pefferman coming back and he's their, their seasoned defender. Um, the rest of it has trying to find some organization right now. If they can take advantage of some of that confusion time in the transition, then that's when Wenatchee's going to have probably their opportunities to get on, on the board. Cordero with the throw-in. Rejected partially by Mata that time. Sent out of bounds. It will be a throw-in once again for the Wildcats. Cordero. The touch-up field for Leon. Rejected by Zumak. Osvaldo Sanchez playing as his own sweeper. The touch to the right, the long kick up field into Wenatchee territory. Sanchez, Alex Sanchez. Mata. Touch up field, Mata. Villa looking to connect with Leon. On the mark is Collier. Couple of bounces. Trying to make a path is Edgar Leon. Leon. Some serious pressure. Across midfield it goes. Bit of nerves playing a factor here early on. Not a lot of clarity. Good through ball that time into the box. This could be interesting and the stop by Mr. Russell before it looked like Benny Mejia could connect. Yeah, it's a good read by by Tanner um, seeing that ball come in and getting off his line really quick to scoop that up. Long ball upfield. Trying to bring it down is Anthony Garcia. A 
Edgar Leon. Edgar Leon painting the stripe. Aaron Leon. Touch to the back. Edgar. Arredondo. That one is Pfefferman. Pushing the rest reset button for his goalkeeper, Sanchez. Cordero. Defensive maneuver by Ocampo. Back to Russell. Right for a kick into Eastmont territory. Can't quite control it there. Eastman on the recovery. Bit of a battle. And Mr. Jesus Covarrubias, the lead referee tonight, signals a free kick in favor of the Wildcats, helping Mr. Covarrubias, Artiago Campbell, and our old buddy, Ed Navarro. Yeah, Sitio's a big, strong player, and, and it's hard to leverage off that ball. Um, maybe trying to get around and, and get some leverage on it, but he's it's uh, might take two BBs to do that. <laughs> A bit of a mistake there, a bit of a miscommunication, and the ball is still dancing around the six whistle on the play. However, the, it was an illegal charge, it looked like, against the goalkeeper, Mr. Russell. So he's yeah. not probably, probably took a, a cue from the Skyline game there, getting numbers in front of the keeper deep inside the box and, and trying to get that ball in there. Wenatchee almost spilled the ball a few times against Skyline. They did. And, and um, if I was Eastman, I would definitely be uh, paying attention to, to that and trying to replicate. Off to the races now. Anthony Garcia, bit of a chipper, and the stop. And a collision there at the last second between Russell and Edgar Leon. The referee asking Mr. Leon to take it easy. And Mr. Russell taking care of this one. We're playing under artificial lights, despite there being quite a bit of sunlight left, but it's a good decision nonetheless. A quick run into the Eastman box. Nice maneuver and a bit of a mistake there. Let's see what the referee says. When Edgy's asking for a penalty kick, I did not see anything illicit. My wise in your eyes saw what? Well, there was contact, but I I don't know if that's worthy of a penalty at that point. It's pretty, pretty tight. I think the referee made the right decision that time. Yeah, I mean, if, if both players touch the ball, then definitely no, no penalty, and I couldn't see from here. Whistle on the play. Wenatchee called on a foul. The Wenatchee player called on a foul. He does not care for that. Nevertheless, it will be Eastmont ball here in the early going. It looked like it was Anthony Garcia called on the foul. Six minutes, 24 seconds into this first half of play. Did you steal my pencil again? I think I might have. Yeah, yeah. I, I put it back underneath your, your uh, notebook. Isn't that just like you? <clears throat> anyway, we're back in action here, folks. Pierre Vega, Reyes. Bit of a tennis match there, a ping pong match. A quick ball that time. Off to the races we go. Who's going to get there first? Nice maneuver by Russell. Playing as his own uh, sweeper. Nifty little right-footed touch there, Matt Wisen. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a risky <laughs> but well-played <clears throat> maneuver there by Tanner. Um, it, it can go multiple ways with what just happened. And um, Anyway, that was... <laughs> Shades of Rene Guita, the legendary yeah. Colombian goalkeeper from the 90s who used to do that all the time. Remember him, uh, Iguita? I he, don't. He used to play as his, basically he was another defender. He used to come out and... Oh, yeah, I remember. Used to, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> A quick run down the flank on the left side. The shot across by Alex Sanchez into the box, cleared away by the back line of Eastmont. Mata. That was Collier. Bounces off uh, an Eastmont player. It will be a throw-in for... Wenatchee, I'm surprised the referee is not asking the Wenatchee player to back up a little bit. Nope, play continues. Long ball down the flank. Chani Vega. Chani, shot across. Nice defensive header. Wenatchee trying again now at midfield. Doesn't quite work. The recovery by Aaron Leon. It's still, once again, betting on that through ball, Matt Wisen. Yeah. Uh, when she's playing a little high, but they're they're getting numbers back. 
<coughs> I, I'd like to see Wenatchee get a little bit more compact with their back three because that, that through ball is there. They're, they're about 10 yards between each player, and, and that's an easy lane to thread the ball through. Eight minutes, 42 seconds into this one. Kay Pefferman sending it to the throw-in. There's the header, the pass by Anthony Garcia, the header by Julian Reyes that sails over the crossbar. Not a major worry for Mr. Osvaldo Sanchez. This moment of the game brought to you by Biosports Physical Therapy, Aqua Therapy, Sports Biomechanics, Orthopedic Physical Therapy, Orthotics, all you need to keep moving. Find them online at biosports.net. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sanchez sending it out of bounds. It will be a throw-in for the hosts, the Wildcats. When actually a little tentative to send that fourth attacker up uh, when they're in the they're attacking third, <clears throat> and I, I think that shows healthy respect for um, the Leon brothers when they're in the midfield. They don't want to be countered, uh, but I, th I think that's what they're going to need to do. And, and at that point, when Eastmont's been kind of ball watching. Um, when that ball is off to the side and crossing. So it, it, there's been opportunity for Wenatchee to exploit the space. So it, it's turned out to be a little interesting uh, cat and mouse right now. This moment of the game brought to you by Clean Connection. Call Clean Connection to keep your carpet, upholstery, and air ducts clean for a healthier environment inside your home. Locally owned. Find them at yourcleanconnection.com. We're back in action now after the throw-in. Whistle on the play, however. Something Mr. Covarrubias did not like. Handball. handball looked like. Yes, indeed. Let's see. They're, they're doing a bit of a chat there between Mr. Hurtado, the coach for Eastmont. And Mr. Covarrubias, the lead referee. Free kick for... He's for Wenatchee, I beg your pardon. A good effort to connect way up front with, it looked like, Chani Vega. Sanchez on the goal kick. Trying to get behind those two defenders there. Garcia and Reyes. Zumak. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be... Oh, boy. Come on, fellas. Take it easy. Bit of a shove there. Gamesmanship trying to hold the, yeah. the ball until they can get back on D. Yeah. Zumak. Nice ball. Chani Vega shot across. This could be interesting if it gets past that defender. It does not, but Wenechi still trying. There is Julian Reyes. There's a shove inside the box. Referee just calls it a throw-in. They're a darn sight closer than us. We're going to go with the experts on this one. Zumak, cleared away by Rogelio Hernandez. And once again, a hard charge there. It will, should be Eastman ball, and it is. Eastman putting it back into play rather quickly. The referee does not care for that. He says, I say when you restart the contest, sir. Looks like Pefferman taking care of a shoe before he restarts the contest. This moment of the game brought to you by Coldwell Banker Cascade, encouraging you to leave your mark. Coldwell Banker Cascade is guiding you home in North Central Washington. 12 minutes, 20 seconds into the first half of play. Wenatchee and Eastmont, Eastmont and Wenatchee. Top of the box, nice maneuver there. With a cloud on his chest, stopping that ball. Reyes. The through ball that time. Maldonado. Zumak on defense. Nice job by Zumak. Over to help for Eastmont is Rogelio Hernandez. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be Wenechi ball. Looks like uh, Zumak will take care of it. Yes, indeed. Touch to the back for Ocampo, Zumak. Across midfield into Eastmont territory. The pivoting header that time by Chani Vega does not pay the dividends he was hoping for. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in this time for Eastmont. 13, 27 on the clock. This could be a good through ball. 
Oh, it just sails a little long that time for Mr. Maldonado, Christian Maldonado. Ball goes out of bounds. Goal kick for Winachi. This moment of the game brought to you by Confluence Health. High quality care close to home. Confluence Health is dedicated to improving their patients' health with safe, high quality care in 12 communities. Across midfield we go into Eastmont territory. Cordero, the header by Rogelio Hernandez. Rejected that time by Mata. Bit of a shove there, play continues. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Eastmont. 14.26 on the clock. Rogelio Hernandez rejected by Pierre Vega. Vega and Collier. Collier and Julian Reyes well marked at all times, Matt Weizen. They do not leave him be single marked. It's a double team almost every time. A quick run down the flank. Defensive maneuvers by Ocampo near the corner with more urgency than style. He just sends it out of bounds. Pivoting header to the top of the box. Julian Reyes want to be starting something, as Michael Jackson would have said. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for the Wildcats, and we're going to have a substitution, it looks like. It looks like it's number six. Let's see Ben Pefferman. All right. Looks like Orlando Maldonado and Mr. Pefferman indeed will be one taking a break. So Orlando Maldonado in for Pefferman. Thank you, Matt. Collier across midfield. The stop by Edgar Leon. Can't quite make it across. Mata. Good. Technical maneuver. Whistle on the play, however. It will be a free kick for Winachi. Sixteen minutes, thirteen seconds into this first half of play. Still not a lot of clear opportunities on either side. Pivoting header coming, no, just a defensive one. Straight ahead. Trying to uh, scoop it was Cristian Maldonado. It didn't quite work. Trying again is Edgar Leon. The long ball. Trying to fight Aaron Leon. Instead, it finds the arms of Mr. Tanner Russell. Mr. Pefferman seems to have an owie of sorts on his, uh, looks like, a right arm. Yeah, this field uh, has got some abrasive... Uh, traps on the field that can really uh, cut you up if you fall on them wrong. Hernandez, the long ball looking for Cristian Maldonado, the stop by Mr. Russell. And with 17-10 on the clock, we'll have a goal kick. This moment of the game brought to you by Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, providing heating and air conditioning service and installation since 1982. Serving residential and commercial, they specialize in indoor air quality installation service and repair. M Merchant, Mata, Viega, Pierre Vega, Collier, on the mark is Edgar Leon, touch up field, good triangulation that time, Mata, Julian Reyes, scooped away by the back line of Eastmont, ball goes out of bounds, it should be Winechi ball, referee agrees with us. It will be a throw-in for the Panthers. Folks, don't forget that, uh, let's see, uh, the 24th of March. Friday, March the 24th, we have softball coming to you live from Eastmont High School. It's Eisenhower, the cadets visiting Eastmont starting at 6.30 p.m. 
Ball goes out of bounds. Looks like the last one to touch it was Jesus Villa, number four for the Wildcats. I'm going to go ahead and say it, Matt Wisen. We're 20 minutes in almost. Not the game I expected to see. No, it's been <clears throat> kind of a letdown in a way. I mean, kind of pretty sloppy. A couple, uh, mm -mm. um, couple of touches there inside the box. And like you said, nothing, nothing too clear. Pretty sloppy. A lot of um, just kind of making stuff up and kicking the ball without a whole lot of possession, which sometimes is fine not to win the possession game. We, we talked about that a little bit last game. <clears throat> But um, I don't know if it's nerves or if it's just both teams canceling each other out. But they need to start just by connecting a few passes and seeing where they're going to be able to exploit the other team tonight. And, and that's not really happening. Reyes, Pierre Vega, Collier, rejected by Eastmont, Cristian Maldonado, touch to the back for Sitio. Trying again, looks like Jesus Villa. Ball sails out of bounds on the rejection by Winacci. No, it was off of Villa's foot. It will be uh, throwing for the Panthers. Defensive header that time by Eastmont. It looks like it was uh, uh, number six, Maldonado. Orlando Maldonado throwing. The header by Alex Sanchez doesn't pay dividends. Apparently, it was an Eastman player who touched it last. That's news to me, but we'll, we're going to go with the experts. They're a lot closer than us, for sure. It will be corner kick for Wenatchee. This could be interesting. 20 minutes, 27 into this first half of play. Still a nil-nil tie between Eastman and Wenatchee. Wenatchee and Eastman. There's the touch. Oh my goodness, a good effort by Chani Vega. Pivoting header sails a little wide. Looks like Mr. Pefferman had a bloody nose and he just got uh, got that to stop and was getting ready to come back in. <clears throat> oh, yep, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You have one of those makeshift uh, stoppers on your nostrils. We've all worn those uh, during our childhood years at one time or another. Yeah, coming off a cold, dry winter. Um, those those come, unfortunately, it's sometimes pretty easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Eastmont's given up a couple close headers inside the six tonight already in, in, in the first 20 minutes. Um, something to watch. Maybe from Wenatchee, if they can just play the ball into the corner and look to get some more crosses. Pefferman. Zumak. Garcia, taken back by Rogelio Hernandez. Garcia on the takeaway a second time. Edgar Leon insisting for Eastmont. Now it's Julian Reyes trying to clear matters up. Reyes opening <clears throat> the game up. Good triangulation that time with Shani. Shani Vega, long ball. Trying to find one of those tall forwards. Going down the flank this time. Good stop by the back line of Wenechi. This could be interesting if uh, Mr. Garcia catches up to that one. He will not, but the clearing effort by Mr. Sanchez, worthy of a blooper real video that time. I was, and the nerves are really playing a factor here, without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, that ball is being played pretty slow back and um, a little too much time to think about it. And, and this pitch is not... Um, not that flat. Yeah, these are these are young kids. And let's not fall. Oh my goodness, a bit of a mistake there. Nobody's clearing it up and then that I don't know about that. Are you allowed to do that? I, I didn't think you were. I think it was just bang bang. He was he was trying to pass it out okay. and at the same time um the keeper was di diving on it. So I don't know if technically you would call that a pass back. Yeah. And uh, just almost immediately after we have Mr. Russell being called upon and just like Mr. Sanchez, he responds nimbly. But yeah, the nerves are definitely playing a factor here. Let's not forget for uh, for both these teams, this is the first uh, regular season game, correct? Yep. And league game. And so league, now, yeah. Now yeah. things really start mattering. <clears throat> um, I mean, every every as we saw last year with Wenatchee, every game, non-league and league matters because your seeding at the end of the year when it comes to state can really. Um, 
either make your life a lot easier or a lot more difficult. True story. Good job by the Eastmont defender, just now not biting on the dribble by the Wenatchee player. Looks like, uh, for a second, it looked like uh, Pierre Vega. There's the throw in. Mr. Sanchez rolling straight ahead. Leon, Edgar Leon. Looks like we have a substitution uh, for Winnetia. I thought I saw number 12 for the Panthers. That would be Mr. Willett. We'll double check on that. Free kick for the Wildcats. 24-24 on the clock. They're gonna, referee has asked to stop the clock. He's gonna check on something. He wants to make sure that the... He asked for 10, I don't know 10. why, but that looks like it's probably more like 12 where the player's lined out. He Substitution, to, <laughs> go ahead please, Matt. He needs to come in closer to the ball this time. <laughs> Substitution for Eastman, number six, Orlando Maldonado goes back in. Replacing Oh, a bit of a mistake there, not being able to clear it out, and it sails over the crossbar. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's number four, Jesus Villa, who's dealing with a cramp of some sort, my, my wizen. Uh, he's just been subbed in for uh, by Maldonado. <clears throat> yeah, that was a golden opportunity for Misma right there, uh, and, and that was a page out of uh, Skyline's playbook right there also. Left foot across. Insisting for Eastmont now is Cordero. Zumak. The header by Pefferman. Recovered partially by Chani Vega. Can't quite control. The ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for the Wildcats. Cordero. Aaron Leon. Rejected by the back line of Wenatchee. And Pefferman on defense with a header sending it out of bounds. 26-11 on the clock. Still tied at 0-0. Throwing by Garcia. Chani Vega opening the game up to the left side. The shot. That time by Mr. Willard, number 12, indeed. The sub we were talking about a second ago. Yeah, Noah, keep an eye on him. He's got good pace. Uh, and I think he's got maybe a little bit more speed than, um, than the player he replaced. And he's got, he's got fresh legs. He had very little minutes against Scotland because he was ill at that time. So um, Noah is off of uh, Gary Healy's team at the FCE and uh, well coached and uh, very exuberant player. Sitio. Battling now is Aaron Leon. Top of the box. Good move. Right for the show. Oh my goodness. And it sails over the crossbar. What an effort by Eastman. And that's what you've been saying all along, all along Matt Wise. And the shot by Cristian Maldonado sailing over the crossbar. What you've been saying all along, collective play, putting passes together, that's the ticket for these two teams. Yeah, and, and we haven't seen much of that, but when, no. we, when we do the other team, you can kind of figure out whether how they're going to defend you. <clears throat> um, and and right now, just if you can get the ball in behind Wenatchee's back line, between the keeper and their back line, and, and put some numbers in there, causing some confusion, um, some communication breakdown, th that's where they're going to get their best chance. Jose Limon has entered the contest for Wenatchee, number 11. But here comes Eastman. Good through ball that time. Maldonado. Let's see what the referee says. Let's see what the referee says. Goal kick. Goal kick. <clears throat> I think that ball was played out of bounds, and, and the player had no chance of getting it. Um, I, a bit of an acting job, you think? No. I, I, you wouldn't see that in no, this game. No, no, <laughs> no. 
No. 28-28 on the clock, folks. This uh, portion of the game is brought to you by Global Car Care. Your vehicle is their number one priority. Diesels and European cars are their specialty. Pick up and drop off available. Stop by their website at globalcarcare.net. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Kovarudis, also um, the the center referee, hasn't called historically. As I've seen many penalties or or given many harsh uh, yellow or red cards. He's he's a very level headed, let the play, let the play play out on the field kind of a guy. Let things sort out on their own instead of making um, too many calls. With, with that said. He and Ed, if you can focus on each other or on those two, they are very well connected tonight. Um, and the two are, are communicating uh, and keeping this game called consistently, which a good referee crew should do. Uh, always look at your ARs for input on uh, especially close, close calls. We're back in action now. Top of the box, pivoting header. Doesn't quite get to the penalty spot. Cleared away. Second try by Edgar Leon. Trying again for Buenacci is Corin Collier. That one barely makes it across midfield. There's a collision there. Whistle on the play. Foul called. It should be Buenacci ball. 30 minutes, 3 seconds. Just under 10 minutes left in regulation here in the first half of play with Buenacci and Eastman tied. At nil nil. Right footed shot. Looking to connect with uh, Mr. Garcia. They, uh, they do connect, but Mr. Garcia's shot sails a bit wide. It will be Osvaldo Sanchez putting it back into action. This moment of the game brought to you by Harvest Valley Pest Control. Living healthy, local, and pest free. You can rest assured that Harvest Valley Pest Control uses kid and pet safe material around your home or office. Call Harvest Valley Pest Control today for your free estimate, 509-423-2207. 509-423-2207. The header by CTO on defense. Pushed up field that time once again by Orlando Maldonado, CTO. Stopped at midfield by Mata. The turn. Maldonado, Cristian Maldonado. Good takeaway by the uh, midfield of uh, Buenacci. Thoroughly clean. Leon, Edgar Leon. On defense now is Cordero. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Buenacci. Interesting approach this time by. Uh, Winachi, what you were talking about earlier, just putting touches together. Throwing for the Panthers. Garcia, defensive header. Bit of a struggle there. Hernandez, taken away by Winachi, recovered by Eastman. We've seen a lot of that today. Yours, mine, mine, yours, tack, tack, tack. Throwing for the Wildcats. Cordero. Rogelio Hernandez. He's got a bit of speed. Sent with more urgency than the style. By the back line of the Panthers. It looked like number five, Emanuel Ocampo. It will be a throw in, should be a throw in for the Wildcats. The throw in by Cordero inside the box. Zumak whistle on the play. Let's see what the referee calls that one. Looks like a foul has been called. It will be Winachi ball. 32.50 on the clock. Winachi and Eastmont. Eastmont and Winachi still tied at nil nil. Whistle on the play once again. A hard charge that time. Yeah, at some point, it's going to be nice to bring a, a card out. Um, just to settle everybody down. Yeah, it's just the number of, of fouls eventually counts, adds up, and it, and it is worthy of yellow carding. And, um, just got to do that. Settle everybody down. 
especially these after the play kind of fouls are just they're not called for and and even if um, there wasn't accumulation it's still a, a card worthy foul as it is into the box we go ball goes out of bounds it reminds me what you just said of this brazilian referee who died not too long ago maybe two weeks ago romualdo arpifilo back in the 80s and 90s he had the strangest habit to calm everybody down he would just kick off a couple of players he just early in the gun a foul that he didn't like out red card gone hmm. one per each team it and then he was just smooth sailing for him the rest of the way that was his strategy uh to, if we're gonna call it something well I, you know as a player i was always appreciated a referee who was very consistent, and I would rather have a referee that was harsh, consistently harsh, than lets everything go. Um, you knew where that that line was. That line, okay. Yeah. It will be a free kick for The so Wildcats. This is, this is what Eastmont can, can capitalize on here. When actually had historically difficult times on defending set pieces, set pieces yes, in yes. the box, and, and now Eastmont gets a chance, instead of long balling it to one or two players, they get a chance to get numbers up into there, which is exactly what we've been talking about. Looks like Leon and Mejia is going to be Leon. The ball dances in front of everybody. Hernandez trying to keep it alive. Can't quite do it. It's Zumak now. Zumak. Pushing it upfield, trying to connect with Chani, Vega, Vega, and Zumak. They're playing hard out there. They're playing a little rough, even. Oh. Through ball. It so doesn't quite find. It doesn't quite find. Uh, looks see, like uh, Garcia, but something happened at midfield that the referee did not like, my wife. Well, and, and that should have been a card, I believe. It was a slide tackle from behind. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of contact, but there was. Didn't draw the ball, draw heel, and, and he called the foul. So that's where I would like to see the game be kind of brought under control. Zumak. Limon, ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Buenachi, says Mr. Covarrubias. Folks, I'd like to take this opportunity to send a quick shout out to one of the people who should be here tonight but is not. Hopefully he's watching and listening and rooting for his team. I'm talking about none other than assistant coach for the Eastmont Wildcats, Mr. Matthew Kimmel, fighting the good fight against a very, very tough, tough break. Matthew is a fellow Washington State University Cougar. And we send them nothing but the ve best vibes we can from up here at base camp. Wishing you a prompt recovery, my brother. Hope to see you on the field coaching and cheering on your team sooner, much sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Uh, soccer community, we need to stay, stay strong, support each other, and especially when uh, one of our own is, is uh, battling a, a, a tough fight. Quick run. Nice job, leaving one behind, trying for a two. Is Edgar Leon? Edgar Leon, is he going to get a shot across? He finds himself surrounded by a forest of white jerseys. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be a goal kick, says the assistant referee. And Mr. Russell will take care of this one. But that was an interesting individual effort from the right flank, my wizen. Yeah, I just dribbled himself into the corner, and, and you're going to have double team when you're when you're there. And so it's kind of an easy way to defend. Um, just really got to get rid of the ball and work off of it and, and get it back when, when you can have some space. When Ashley's defense, uh, you know, they're seasoned. They know what Mr. Leone is all about, and, and they're not going to give him a whole lot of space to move. 37-42 on the clock. We're just a couple of minutes away from the end of the f uh, regulation here in the first half. Johnny. Long ball into the box. Julian Reyes shot across. Who's going to tap it in? Uh, nobody can quite connect. Limon was well marked. So was Willett. There's another shot. Reyes. Offside. Thank you, Matt. I, we cannot see the, I could not see the flag from up here. 
We have reached the 38 minute mark, which uh, means that the clock on the scoreboard has stopped and the time is now being kept on the field by the officials. You know who I think we look like up here? Stadler and Waldorf. I was thinking of those two guys on the Muppet, <laughs> Muppet movie. That, uh, is that them? Okay. I, d I never knew their name, but I, they were some of my favorite characters. Ball goes out of bounds. I, I wish I had some of their one-liners. They were brilliant. <laughs> Zumak. Bit of a shoulder push there. Shot across by Garcia. Sails a little wide. Not a major worry for Mr. Sanchez. Pivoting header by Edgar Leon. Aaron Leon. Trying to find Mr. Hernandez. Instead, it bounces back into Eastmont territory. Reyes, considering his options, shades it to the left, looking to find Willett. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be Wenachi ball. Throwing, coming for the Panthers. Now, at this rate, Coach Stronson's prediction might well come true. He predicted that this game will probably go into overtime. I don't know about that yet, but um, it has it has uh, several times in in the past. I, if, to me, it feels like we might get a goal. Collier, Pefferman, uh, only a partial clearing. Reyes sailing past one. Reyes into the box. Reyes opening the game up to the left side for Chani. Chani Vega. Well marked, Chani is. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be Winachi ball. Taking care of it is Collier. Mata. Reyes. Reyes making a path as he goes. Defensive effort that time by Rogelio Hernandez to his goalkeeper. Aaron Leon. And there's the whistle that tells us that this first half has come to an end with Eastmont and Winachi still knotted up at 0-0. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have a look at what transpired in the first half. Won't take long, and we'll talk about what we can expect out of this second half between these two arch rivals from both sides of the mighty Columbia. Don't go away. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want to bet, kid? Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Life Channel. Hey man, 
How's it going? Uh, getting better, actually, thanks. Did they give you anything for pain after surgery? Because I think I may have some left over. Nah, that's all right, man. Actually, me and my doctor talked about not sharing prescriptions, and that ibuprofen is a good option for me. The risk of addiction is not worth it. Makes sense. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. Welcome back to Eastmont High School Wildcat Stadium. We are at the halfway point here between the Wildcats and the visiting Panthers from Wenatchee High School. And uh, job number one is to basically uh, tell the truth to our uh, viewership. This was a first half that only a mother could love. <laughs> it's not the English Premier League tonight. <laughs> um, I, 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 I was expecting more uh, in terms of scoring opportunities. Um, but I have to I have to say there were a lot of factors at play here. This is the first game of the of the league season. A lot of time a lot of some of these kids is the first game playing against Eastmont and at the varsity level. And uh, well, some of that adds up. These are these are young kids after all. Yeah, there's some nerves at play for sure. We saw probably the best scoring opportunities have taken place by uh, mishaps. <clears throat> um, and and a lot of times mishaps come from nerves, and um, and there you go. We we talked about that uh, earlier in pregame about who can take advantage of uh, of mishaps, who can uh, keep their head the calmest. You did. Um, we and, did. Mm -hmm. uh, and and there we go. Those are probably some of the most entertaining parts of the game in the first half tonight. Um, it, it, hopefully, you know, I'd like to see some a little bit more. Um, organization and tactful play in the second half i don't know if it's going to play out that way but at least we can there are some things that can be capitalized on if this style of play continues yeah yeah we saw a couple of plays for both teams in which they connected they played collectively they kept the ball low they took their time instead of just going for the oh let's hope this works and just kicking in 30 40 yards they were trying to put something together, and that's where they're the most effective, I believe, uh, at least in the first half. Yeah, there were a few um, times when, when Eastmont was able to take advantage or, or build the ball up a lot. A lot of Eastmont's play has been long ball. Unfortunately, they don't have the, the hold-up play. Wenatchee's got a very stout defense, and if you're not able to, to split them and get in behind them, you've got to hold the ball up if they're going to play to you. And, and Aaron... And um, Mr. Maldonado are kind of, they're disconnected. So one gets the ball and the other is nowhere to be found. And then they're double, triple teamed. Um, and as we saw with Edgar uh, dribbling into the corner, there's no help there. And because they're getting the ball up so fast, the rest of the team can't catch up. Um, and like guys with Wenatchee, um, they don't have the ability to hold the ball up either. Um, they don't have that big, strong forward who can play to the ball with his back to goal and hold the ball, wait for the rest of his team to engage and, and become connected with him and play off of that. So and there's no plan B. If, if that through ball isn't there, when actually started playing the ball into the corner, but their problem is that they've been dribbling the ball into the corner, killing that space for that overlap runner to get into. And now you got the, the player dribbling to the corner is bringing defenders with him. And so now long, you don't have that space anymore. You just got congestion. Um, so, you know, the same same thing holds true, I guess, for the second half. Can Eastmont get a few more numbers up into the box, cause create confusion in front of the goalkeeper and behind the line and capitalize on a, a misplayed ball? And can Wenatchee get the ball into space in the corner and cross the ball quickly to runners coming on? Yeah. I'd like to see also, uh, I don't know if this is worth mentioning or not, but uh, the creatives, both the creatives, the Maldonados, the, the Julian Reyes, uh, not so isolated, not yeah. so isolated. They They're were out there super, on a desert. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Get them some help. Get them some help because they can make something happen. They don't need a whole lot of room for that either. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, the second half, Wenatchee, Eastmont, NCW Live Channel. Don't go away. 
we were in Roseburg in the early 80s. Our oldest son, Dan, was a defensive back, a starter on that team. They set, in fact, became Oregon State champions, setting the first undefeated 14-0 season in Oregon's history. And a lot of people were losing jobs. Friends had left the community. It was a hard time. That football team and companies like Abby's kept that place alive and the community spirit alive. That's legendary. I chose a career at Confluence Health because I wanted to help people and I knew there would be opportunities for growth. I started as a medical assistant, but quickly advanced in my career. I received five promotions in only seven years, three of those in management roles. Most organizations don't offer that type of growth. Now, as a career pathway coordinator, I let everyone know, come join Confluence Health. Come grow with us. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the diagnostic doctor from Dick Seating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dix, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing and they service all major brands of HVAC units. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chase on the other side. Great, I want that one. I like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. you find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Welcome back to Wildcat Stadium, Eastmont High School. Both teams are still in uh, the midst of their halftime team talk. We have about 45 seconds left in uh, halftime. Let's take this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about what's coming down the pike. On March the 28th, Tuesday, March the 28th, we'll be coming to you live from right here, Eastmont High School, to bring you Eastmont against Eisenhower, the cadets from the Yakima Valley, paying the Wildcats a visit. And then on Friday, March the 31st, Wenatchee Baseball hosts West Valley, 6.30 p.m. So the soccer game is at 7 p.m. Then Friday, March the 31st, Wenatchee Valley, at Win uh, make that West Valley at Wenatchee Baseball at 6.30 in the evening. So lots of sports coming your way here on NCW Live Channel. Lots of action. Let's see if we see some action here in the second half between these two arch rivals, Eastmont and Wenatchee. Wenatchee and Eastmont. Don't want to hurt anybody's feeling, uh, feelings there. We're going to have a Eastmont restart the action here, going from left to right. I'm 3-4-3 three three this year on your screen that's right <coughs> perfection all right and we're back in business here near the eastern shores of the mighty columbia bit of a takeaway doesn't last too long for wenatchee recovered quickly by benny mejia pushed up field by orlando maldonado looking to find aaron leon Bit of a battle there inside the circle. Reyes, Aaron Leon, touch to the side. Benny Mejia, whistle on the play, foul called. It should be Wenatchee ball. We've just started this 
second half tied at 0 0. Alex Sanchez ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Eastmont. Maldonado ball goes out of bounds. It should be a throw in for Winachi. Collier looking for Garcia. Doesn't quite work. There's Reyes on the bounds. Reyes colliding with his own teammate. And Eastman taking advantage of the mix-up. Let's see who's going to get there first. It's going to be Mr. Russell. Once again, ice water in that kid's veins. Matt Wisen. Yeah, good job reading that <clears throat> and coming out. Um, you know, when she's got to recognize the space in between the goalkeeper and, and their center back. And, and Eastmont's been trying to exploit that. And when that happens, Tanner needs to step out a little further and, and be ready to intercept that, especially if she's going to push up their defenders further up. Got to give uh, Eastmont props connecting with uh, Christian Maldonado on that play. But man, Russell making a name for himself in a way. Second time that we've seen him risk life and limb, so to speak. Yeah, and once you get outside the box, um, who knows? I mean, because you're, you're the, at that point, you're the last player back. And so any foul can be amplified pretty big, big when it comes to the referee's decision on, on handing a card out or not. And Tanner's sitting on a red card already this year. Second red Against card. Against Quincy, that's right. Second red card, and he's done for the rest of the year. Uh, so that's a pretty harsh, harsh penalty. Wow. Ball goes out of bounds. Throw in for Wenatchee. Pierre Vega looking for Garcia. Off to the races, Garcia into the box. Who's going to get there first? It's going to be Mr. Osvaldo Sanchez. Showing plenty of sang for himself. Ooh, he almost carried that ball across the line. Uh, that was close. <clears throat> now it's Russell. Are folks leaving or arriving back there? I think they're arriving. Uh, must have had opportunity to take advantage of some pizza at halftime. At, hey, uh, in yeah. The... yeah. Christian Maldonado. Bit of a collision there. Hernandez whistle on the play foul. Call correct. Uh, Correctly called by the referee, Mr. Covarrubias. 43 and 30 on the clock. Free kick for Eastmont. It's Mr. Perferman. Only one on the wall. Looks like uh, Chani Vega on the wall. Pfefferman, not a surprise to Mr. Russell. Russell, across midfield, looking to find Chani Vega. Instead, he finds Pfefferman, winning no style points. He's sending it to the throw-in. It will be Wenatchee Ball. This moment of the game brought to you by Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Plan your next tournament and event today. Call the Pro Shop to schedule your time on the Full Swing S4 widescreen golf simulators. Call 509-884-4653. There's the throw-in. Oh, a bit of a mistake there. Nobody cleared it out, and it just... They're letting that ball bounce all the yeah, way through. It's absolutely. A... It's like somebody's going to have to tap it in. Nobody did. Let's give the uh, number once again for Highlander Golf Course and Grill. 509-884-4653. Bit of a collision there. Whistle on the play. It will be Wenatchee ball. Mr. Reyes wanting to start it right away, but smartly he waits for the referee. Mata. Chani Vega. Chani sailing past one. Touch to the back. Pierre Vega, the shot, a bit of a bounce, and wow, my goodness. That's, those are some good reflexes out there because he was played to his right and bounce to his left. He's not happy with himself after uh, perhaps he didn't like where the way that goal kick ended up, but that was a good reaction by the goalkeeper, Sanchez, Matt Wisen. Very good job getting up off the deck and, 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 oh. and going the other direction. That last minute re, uh, deflection really um, was, a, was a very difficult ball to defend. 
Shades of Claudio Bravo, the goalkeeper for Real Betis in Spain. Collier. Garcia. Reyes. Right footed shot. Nimbly block. Buenacci trying again. Merchant. Oh, taken away by Eastman. Quick run. Cristian Maldonado. Maldonado into the box. What the, will the referee say? The referee say, it will say, he will say corner kick. I agree with that call. I did not see a foul there, Matt Weiser. Yeah, it looked like he was looking to go to ground on that. Um, <clears throat> played the ball past. Um, Shades of Neymar, perhaps. Yeah, yeah there was some... Um, Definitely some uh, theatrical maneuvers going on. 46-45 now on the clock. Right for the kick from the corner spot. Whistle on the play. It will be Winachi ball. There was a foul call, I believe. Mr. Russell will take care of it. And the temperature drops, but not the attendance, folks. Yeah, that's a really good turnout tonight. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be Eastmont ball. It looks like it will be Mr. Orlando Maldonado playing and putting into play, and he did. The pivoting header that time by Alex Sanchez doesn't work. Bounces off a defender. Ball goes out of bounds. Throw in for Winetti once again. <laughs> and Johnny Vega cannot hide his frustration. Tried to keep the ball in bounds. Or oh, rather, from going out of bounds by slapping at it. By that time, the ball was out of bounds already, so maybe next time. A lot of um, play that's not considered side on taking place tonight, where the players are are, are receiving the ball facing the sideline and, and, and just killing their opportunity to open the field up and closing their vision off uh, in addition to limiting the, the space they have to maneuver. Freddy Arredondo. So well, if they're receiving the ball in between, you know, they're, they're facing the sideline when they receive the ball. It's just, it's really hard to, to do much there. Because in, in a sense, you got another marker to worry about. You the sideline yeah, itself, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so right now, the player's running towards the sideline, receiving the ball, yeah. headed out of bounds. If he receives the ball, he's only got one thing he can do with it. Grab it and go back the other way and hope to find some space. Uh, if he started out wide, he can he can receive that ball side on, and, and he's got the whole field to work with. And, and that's just not Eastmont there. I mean, that was just a, a, an obvious example. But both both teams are doing that. Throwing for uh, the Panthers. Rejected by Pefferman. Collides with a defender. Pefferman has to be careful. He already had a nosebleed earlier today. Bit of a chipper there. Nimble touch. Connecting with Aaron Leon into the box. Left footer shot, the show! Oh my goodness, what a save by Russell! Trying again. It was Benny Mejia. Then it was Maldonado. The Chilena doesn't pay the dividends. Oh my goodness, that was splendid stuff by Russell. Good stuff by Eastmont. Even better by the Wenatchee goalkeeper, Matt Wison. Very good save there by Tanner. Just keep staying on your feet, making yourself big, um, keeping an eye on that ball as it went through traffic. It's not easy. And that was a great strike to the corner. <clears throat> 49 45 on the clock. And Mr. Russell has had two or three, if not more, opportunities to show off his skill, and he's just he's done just that. Painting the stripe there on the left side, trying to find Chani Vega. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be Winachi ball. Temperature continues to drop. The throw in by Collier looking for Chani Vega. Bit too long. The ball goes out of bounds. It will be Mr. Sanchez putting it back into play for the Wildcats. Long ball. With more optimism than accuracy. Ball sails out of bounds. Mr. Zumak will let it do just that. Throw in for Winachi. The 
This moment of the game brought to you by the Kennedy Real Estate Group. They're more than selling houses, they're building communities. Buying or selling? Call the Kennedy Real Estate Group. Find them online at K-E-N-A-D-Y group.com. Ball sent out of bounds by Mr. Collier. It will be a throw-in for Eastmont. Orlando Maldonado with Edgar Leon. Back to Maldonado. Sitio. Across midfield into Eastmont territory. Pfefferman with a bit of trouble is Cordero. Trying to keep it alive. Recovered by Pierre Vega. The long ball off to the races is Garcia. First on it is Benny Mejia. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be Eastmont ball. And it is with a bit of trouble there. Mr. Sanchez. 51-43 on the clock. Pfefferman. Through a mixer there. Mata. Whistle on the play. Foul call. It will be East Mumball. Pfefferman. Cordero. The long ball to the heart of the box. They really need to stop doing that. At least not do it quite so much. Just going to need to get more than one def one attacker in the box who's surrounded by three defenders. Leon and Sitio. <clears throat> taken away by Merchant. Whistle on the play and a hard collision there. It will be Eastmont ball. No card forthcoming, but I think the right call. 40, make that 52 and 40 on the clock. Eastmont with another good opportunity perhaps. This moment of the game brought to you by Les Shrub Tires. Les Shrub takes your safety seriously every time you stop by. Let's see what becomes of this. They must be asking for 10 on every play because... <laughs> I don't, yeah. A couple of times they've had to bring the wall back in. There's a chipper. A pivoting header and it sails over the crossbar. Good opportunity gone wasting. Aaron Leon, it looked like on the header. A good chance for the Wildcats to break this tie open but no such luck this time it was indeed a number nine Aaron Leon now it's Benny Mejia recovered by Collier and Sanchez Sanchez across the center alley for Pierre Vega looking up surveying his territory a bit of a screen there. Trying again. It's Gabriel Mata. He's got some room. Sanchez. Mata. Reyes. Reyes. Pushing the pause button. The touch for Chani doesn't quite work. It will be a goal kick for Eastmont. Bit of hesitation on the goalkeeper. Playing it really close to the line. That was a little better by Wenatchee. Strung three or four passes together. Had a discernible attack. You could see what they were trying to accomplish. The ball in the end was just not quite the right ball to be delivered, but um, <clears throat> it, it was much better than accidental play. Zumak. Merchant. Ball goes out of bounds. Giancarlo Cordero on the throw-in. Substitution coming for, it looks like, Wenatchee. We'll tell you in a second who it is. It looks like number 11, but uh, we're not betting the house on that just yet. It is indeed number 11. That would be Mr. Jose Limon returning for some more playing time. Is that Mr. Mata he's going in for? <clears throat> I believe number four. Number four, yes. I'm surprised my eyes actually could see that. Defensive effort by Giancarlo Cordero. Pefferman and the goalkeeper, Mr. Sanchez. Maldonado, the long ball. Second try this time by Benny Mejia into the box and can't quite connect with Christian Maldonado. 
It was Orlando on the first touch of this sequence. 55-55 on the clock. This moment of the game brought to you by Sangster Motors. Family owned and operated. Home of the all new electric Hummer pickup and SUV. Is there a ball on the field over there? Am I seeing things? Oh, wow. What is that? That is a ball. It's a second ball on the field. Looks like the AR uh, just just picked that one out. <clears throat> and now that somebody from outside is going to go and kick it to the... Behind the goal? Yeah, behind the goal. There we go. I don't know if it's a photographer, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Collier. Gar eh, Vega. Trying again is Pierre Vega. Whistle on the play. Offside called. It will be an indirect free kick for Eastmont. Fifty seven eleven on the clock. We've seen a little more action than we saw in the first half. Yeah, I think both teams are going to want to take care of this in the run and play instead of going oh, into extra for time. For sure, for <clears> sure. <throat> Reyes, the long ball. Looking for Garcia. Sent out of bounds by Pefferman. Are we going to have a substitution? It looks like we are. It looks like Noah Willett. Yes, indeed, number 12. We have three players coming in. One of them is well. So two, two, I believe. Two, okay. <clears throat> we'll tell you about the second one in a bit. Bit okay. of a mixer there. Players call for handball. No call is forthcoming. Play continues. Mata, three points. It will be a goal kick for Eastmont. Fifty-eight thirty-eight on the clock. Oh, this could be interesting. Quick return. Garcia, Garcia, the chipper over the head of the goalkeeper. And he manages to keep it alive. Nice job by Sanchez. Yeah, good job. You know, Ben has done a very good job at center back tonight. Ben, I keep calling him Ben. Uh, Mr. Pefferman. Uh, why, why do you call him Ben anyway? That's his dad. And I, oh. I went to high school with him and played oh, okay. him with him a long time ago. <laughs> so anyway, apologize. Um, but he's done a, a solid job tonight at center back. Uh, very mobile and, and strong play tonight by by Mr. Pefferman by Kai <clears throat> Reyes past the referee finding Zumak on the mark is Maldonado straight up field back to Reyes Reyes no foul in my book referee says please get up sir uh, the ball starts second time that has happened the ball just bounces around nobody there to tap it in, head it in, sink it in, nothing. Ultimately, is Mr. Sanchez taking control. Limon. Past Garcia, recovered by Eastman. The long ball once again, off to the races is Aaron Leon and Russell. Putting the fire out. Ocampo. Chani Vega, ball goes out of bounds. It will be Winachi ball. This moment of the game brought to you by Save Mart. Shop smart, shop local. Providing outstanding value and service since 1962. You'll find it at Save Mart. Bought my refrigerator from them a couple years ago. No it's kidding. It's been a fantastic refrigerator. Back when you could not find an appliance. 
anywhere. And I did, I scoured the world for this refrigerator. And finally, uh, of all places. Oh, good ball. Porchani. And he, yep, he committed the foul. He committed the foul. Chani dropped his marker. It will be a free kick for Eastmont. I'm, I'm in the market for a new dryer. I might have to check it out. Save mark. I believe we bought our, our, our washer and dryer from them. And man, they, I don't know if they still sell this brand, so I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but it's been, we bought them, I don't know, 15 plus years ago, and they're still holding strong. And, Holy uh, mackerel. <clears throat> You don't see that out of appliances anymore. <laughs> no, they're not built to last for sure. The quick touch, opening the game up. Interesting move that time. Merchant on the right side. Shitting. Wood clear by the left back that time. It was number 14, Rogelio Hernandez, on that nimble defensive move. 62-13 on the clock. There's a throw-in. Bit of a header there. That one will sail out of bounds. Not a major worry. I thought I heard a whistle there. Yeah, a little bit of a push-off trying to get some space. <clears throat> This uh, moment of the game brought to you by Together for Youth, encouraging you to dispose of unused and expired prescriptions to protect youth and the environment. Find a kiosk, a kiosk near you visiting by visiting medproject.org. Matt Wisen, the floor is yours. So he's not starting to get numbers back, but they're really flat, and they're collapsing in, in front of their keeper pretty deep. And so you know, what Wenatchee could be doing now is, is trying to get that, that back line pushed back as far as they can receiving the ball but didn't point it back towards the top of the box for a secondary attack and a shot from 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 depth um, and I think that's where Wenatchee might get some some success likewise Eastmont still has to stick with what they they came out with and I think in the first five ten minutes of this game where they were really getting looks at goal um, and and that's numbers a little bit more of a methodical buildup and some passing trying to get Wenatchee moving side to side when they can play in behind at that point Rowan for the Panthers. Is he going to get a shot across? Nope. The ball went out of bounds. None of that will count. It will be a goal kick for the Wildcats. And now, once again, we have two balls <coughs> on the field. Sixty-three fifty-six on the clock. Still knotted up at 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, as long as the game, we've seen moments of some embellishment play tonight where, where they're looking to draw a foul and get a set piece. That's the worst kind of play in my mind. I hope it doesn't devolve into that. This game has had that, um, or these two teams have, have played that style in the past. And, um, they have or have not? They have. Okay. And I don't think it's... Bit of a shove there. That should be a card, Mr. Referee, in my opinion. There was no intention to play the ball. No. Nope, just a free kick. <clears throat> hasn't been a whole lot of... Um, he hasn't shown that that's going to be a card tonight. <laughs> that's no. true. He's been consistent about that, yes. <clears throat> Pefferman. Sixty-four, fifty-one. To the heart of the box. Defensive header that time by Mata. Trying again on the left side is Benny Mejia under some pressure. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw-in for Wenatchee. Looks like it will be Zumak taking care of it. 65-15 on the clock. This moment of the game brought to you by Abby's Pizza. For more than 50 years, Abby's has proudly served the Northwest with toppings to the edge. 100% real cheese and freshly rolled dough. Make it an Abby's Pizza tonight. Cordero. Bit of hesitation there. There we go. Rejected by Mata. Player hits the deck. Referee says, please get back up. 
There's Cordero again. Benny Mejia trying to get make a pass to Marcus. He does. He's going to go for three. Ball kind of went out of bounds, in my opinion, but play continues. Wenetzi recovers. This could be interesting. A uh, good steal that time. Why? Yeah, grab of the jersey. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Zumak, the culprit that time. Free kick for Eastmont. Sixty-six twenty-two on the clock. Wenatchee and Eastmont, Eastmont and Wenatchee all knotted up. Zero zero. To the heart of the box, Russell with some trouble and traps it in the second try. Off to the races we go now. Will it? Nicely swept away by Sitio. No foul call. None should have been called. Completely clean tackle, in my opinion. Yeah, good play. Or a good good defense there. Just need to get rid of that ball sooner. I have no need to be inviting contact. And, um, if you're going to be countering. You, you and Willard has what it takes to do that. He's a fast, fast mm -hmm. fella. Collier on the throw in. The shot across by Willett, dances in front of a goal, the shot, Reyes, and it sails just a little bit wide. Yeah, I think uh, BB just had a little bit too much time there, tried to pick that corner out instead of just doing what he does and, and, and hitting it. 67-35, BB is of course uh, Julian, Julian Reyes. Yes, yeah, sorry. It's all right, that's what they call him in the, in the team, so that's what they call him. That's it, it's habit. I've coached him before, and I coached his older brother back on my 99 and 2000 team. Pepperman taken away by Reyes. Reyes, charge yeah, from behind, should a be a penalty kick. That should be a penalty kick, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I think that's the right call, and there should be a card, and it's a yellow card for Pepperman. I thought that was the right call, Matt Weiser. It was. It's unfortunate that that might be the difference maker in this contest, but that was the right call. Yeah, and it looks like uh, BB landed on the ball there, so he probably got the wind knocked out of him. <clears throat> out of himself, so. See if he can, if he can get up and he's a tough kid. He, he is. But it's hard to be tough when you can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see, who's gonna take care of this one? Will it be the man himself? Will it be Mr. Reyes? It looks like it will be Mr. Reyes. Is Reyes against Osvaldo Sanchez. 68 minutes, 56 seconds. Two actors, one scene. Reyes at the ready. The whistle, the shot, and the stop. The stop. The second try sails over the crossbar. Sanchez, brilliant, brilliant. Vidal Hurtado just shakes his head. I have to give props to Sanchez, but but Reyes should have done better than just center and low, Matt Weisen. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I never quite like when the penalty taker is the one that goes down on a hard foul. Um, your, your system is all... Your system's yeah. all out of whack. Yeah. He's trying to catch his breath. He's, he's emotional yeah. at that point. Um, good job by the keeper still. Absolutely. And not just picking a side to dive. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of times you see balls come straight down the middle that are, are goals because the keepers just go out of the way. Diving. Um, just uh, nerves and, and good play. <laughs> and then Willett sails uh, one over the crossbar on the second try. Oh my goodness. You know, we saw Wenatchee against Central Valley go into penalties. They struggled. <clears throat> First three shooters missed. Yep, they struggled. Um, and, and, and Mr. Tronson said that penalties were their um, Achilles heel mm -hmm. before the, uh, the Skyline game. <clears throat> And they continue to be, but I gotta give uh, Mr. Sanchez 
some yeah, props. Fantastic. Terrific stuff. And then standing strong and, and getting in the way of obstructing that second shot. May not have got a hand on it, but um, still was in, in the shooter's sight. Sight, and, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, my goodness, all the emotion that was missing in the first half, we had it in a matter of a minute and a half here in the second half. <laughs> The penalty kick call, the kick, the stop, the second try, the coach's reaction, the Eastman players' react reaction just basically swarming their goalkeeper. But we're going to go back to the action that's happening now because this could be interesting. A free kick for Winechi. Well played on the defense by Eastman. Bit of a shove there. Play continues. Julian Reyes. Julian Reyes battling it out with Cordero. Julian wants that goal more than you want the next breath you're about to take, folks. Ball goes. Call no, it foul. foul. Foul on, on Julian. He needs to get himself settled. He's well, got what it takes. They let him dribble clear down and continue that on, clear down into the corner before he calling that foul and bringing it back. We saw, we saw that in the first half, too. I, I kind of like it when they called the initial foul. And I, I do like it when they let it play on, but sometimes it's just like injuries are going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Bit of a chipper there. Oh, a good opportunity gone wasting as they can't connect with Maldonado and they charged him from behind. They charged an Eastman player from behind. I, I think it happened right at the line. I do yeah. not, <clears throat> I did not see a penalty kick. I think it was right at the line and Mr. Covarrubias agrees with us. Oh my goodness, you could, you could write a Shakespearean drama with the, all the gesticulations of Coach Hurtado down there. He's putting on his hat. He's taking off his hat. He's covering his face. He's, he's yeah, it was a legit. It was a foul. I, I, it was kind of awkward. I, I think the player got tangled up trying to keep up with him, <clears throat> brought him down. They might have taken advantage of maybe two or three yards. They could have put the ball back further. I, as a shooter, I'd rather have it back a little further because right now you, it's right. hard to get that ball up and down so tight to the goal. Uh, but it's, it's opening up. No one wants to go into extra minutes for sure. Oh. See, once again, the referee asking for the 9 meters 15. All right, 10 yards. And... It will be. Is it Maldonado? No, it's not Maldonado. Maldonado uh, Christian is inside the box. I think this is probably Edgar uh, Milan. I right footed shot. Bounces off the wall. Not a major worry. And the second try sails even wider. It was number 11, Edgar Leon. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Matt Wisen. Yeah, Edgar's, uh, Edgar and his brother both play uh, for Crossfire, um, Crossfire team. Um, both fantastic players uh, have played for Wenatchee FC in the past. Seventy-four and twelve, just a handful of minutes, maybe a little more, before the end of regulation. Will it? Taken away, Maldonado, Leon, inside the box. Aaron Leon, the header. Mr. Russell, a bit of a position still, was struggling to keep control of the ball. Is still in play, and then Russell finally takes over. My goodness gracious. Staying with it, just in the middle of a scrum. I, I don't, looked like there was definitely um, one of those just swallow your whistle moments in there, because it was, anything goes for a minute. Edgar Leon. Oh, nice move, fooling his marker, shot across, top of the box, nobody there. Giancarlo Cordero. Christian Maldonado, down the flank, rejected by Zumak. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be Winechi ball. Let's see what's going on here. We're gonna see another yellow card, it looks like. Yes, a yellow card. We'll tell you in a second for whom. A bit of an exchange of ideas. It's a, it's an, uh, looks like an Eastman player. <clears throat> it's number eight for Eastman, Angel Sitio.
So two yellow cards, both for Eastman. The first one, of course, happening when the penalty kick was called in favor of Wenatchee. That didn't go according to plan for the Panthers. Let's see how this one turns out. Reyes opening the game up across the center alley for Pierre Vega. Further up, down the flank, Sanchez shot across, and Mr. Osvaldo Sanchez sees it sail out of bounds. When actually playing pretty defensively here, um, they like to bring one of their outside backs up. Um, in the attack sometimes, I prefer the weak side, so the side of the ball would be crossed too. Um, and uh, that's kind of where Wenatchee could use more numbers. But they've been run. This could be interesting if he gets past his market. He does not. He hits the deck instead. It was number seven. It looks like Benny Mejia. So for the most part, they've been keeping five back. There's three and then the two holding mids and, and only a, attacking with. Chani Vega looking for Garcia. Shades of the skyline game on that play. Ball goes out of bounds. Matt Wisen. So only attacking with, with six, playing really, um, really careful, I, I, I guess, there. And um, probably picking up on something that Eastmont might, might be trying to exploit. <clears throat> Collier on the throw in. Alex Sanchez back to Collier. Sending it out of bounds was Edgar Leon. Collier looking for Chani Vega. Bit of a collision there. Whistle on the play. Foul called. Garcia does not care for that call. It will be a free kick for Eastman. And interestingly, interestingly enough, it's Osvaldo Sanchez pleading his case with the referee, perhaps hoping for a yellow card that time. Pefferman. A bit of a leg, a high kick, absolutely. A bit of a high kick. Still leg up, dangerous play, whatever you want to call it. Throwing the ball. I mean, it's getting really chippy and throwing the ball off to the side of the field and having the AR play it back in. Not cool. Is is a worthy of a card as well. So, you know, I wouldn't. It wouldn't hurt my feelings any if the referee decided to play this game a little tighter and and start just getting him in check because we're down to the last extra time here. Yeah, we're we're going to get. Not that we got to the point where the referee. Where the uh, scoreboard clock has stopped working and the referee keeps the time. So I've got about a minute, a minute left in regular time. Okay, <clears throat> Pefferman. Pefferman. Header by Sitio. Sanchez. Reyes. Heel touch for Pierre Vega. The header. Cordero on the recovery. Pierre Vega. Bit of a carousel. The long ball off to the races now is Edgar Leon. And once again, <laughs> Mr. Russell having to. He's comfortable coming off that line. He sure is, by golly. It's uh, it's uh, night and day compared to Sed Munguia. Sed Munguia had a completely different set of skills. Very skilled goalkeeper, but Mr. Russell is a different animal. Cordero. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Wenatchee. Anthony Garcia. Reyes. Is he onside? He is not. And that would cost them. Uh, that should cost them. Let's see what the referee says. No, just a little talking to for Mr. Chani Vega. Well, and the referees allowed some of that to take place. Like we just saw the, the, the player the ball, throwing it off. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that cap might be a little bit hard to get back in the bag now. <laughs> well said. Well said. Pefferman. Straight up route one. Recovered by Wenagi, however. Zumak not happy with that touch to Garcia. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for the Wildcats. And it looks like we're going to overtime, folks. It's nothing official yet, of course. But uh, unless something 
absolutely astonishing happens. We're going to have a few more minutes of soccer action for you here on NCW Live Channel. Glad to have you with us this second half. Actually, the second half of the second half is finally living up to the hype. We'll see how the rest of the contest plays out. Bit of a heel touch there. Looking for Reyes. Rejected by the defense. Looking for a handball. No call. I don't think it was intentional. But the referee disagrees with us. We're going to go with the experts. It will be an indirect free kick. An indirect free kick for the Wildcats. Everybody. Everybody except Mr. Sanchez. Everybody in a red jersey. Inside Wenatchee territory. Sanchez. Considering his options. At this point, it's been two minutes of extra time. You're going to mark out 10 yards. <laughs> Is that what something? he's doing? Yes. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, at least he's consistent. He's done that all game so long. He was there, and, and now to, to kill time. I mean, he should just call the game over. The long ball, heart of the box. Cleared away by Ocampo. And there is the whistle that tells us that we're going into overtime. Vidal Hurtado quite happy, clapping his hands, encouraging his team, and a bit of a shoving match. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. Good job by Sanchez clearing, uh, uh, Osvaldo Sanchez clearing his red clad teammates two, three, three. out of the way. Absolutely unnecessary. It's been a tough game. It's been a hard fought game. No need to make it a forgettable game. I was just looking to see if anybody came off Wenatchee's bench to come onto the pitch. <clears throat> yeah, the, would have been the, the referee is saying, everybody just back up, back up. And Sanchez taking charge, shoving his teammates, telling him, just go to the sideline. Go to the sideline. And now, let's see what Coach Hurtado wants to do. No, it's, it's number seven and number eight for uh, Eastmont. That would be Benny Mejia and Angel Sitio, who already has a yellow card, chatting it up with the referees. I don't think they want to give another yellow, and, and, but they sure are giving them a stern talking to. I want to know if there's somebody on the other side who's going to get a, a talking to, because now Vidal Hurtado is waiting for his players so that he can do the the team talk. Well, uh, and there go, there go the referees. Are they going to approach the uh, the Winnetchi bench? Let's see. Uh, Mr. Navarro was there watching the whole thing. Though. He was. Um, I know, yeah, there goes Mr. Covarrubias, and he's going to, something tells me he's going to pick someone out. He is going to pick someone out. And see, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you both. One of them is number 14 for Wenatchee. That's Kellen Zumak. And the other one, it looked like number three, Corin Collier. So, uh... Are they going to make them, all uh, four of them come out and shake hands or something? Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Sing Kumbaya or something. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna shake hands. And they're going to shake hands. Either I hope they're going to shake hands. Maybe they're going to just show them all yellow cards. Oh, are they calling team captains? What's going on? Prob yeah, I probably think, calling team captains yeah, now just, at this point, saying which way do you want to go? Yeah, um, they're, they're putting five minutes on the on the clock. So, um, at what point, Mr. Tronson was telling me that that uh, the Big Nine was going to be a a pilot program to go two tens instead of two fives. Oh, in an effort to get rid of penalties. Oh, to encourage the, the teams to win it during run of play and and not take it to penalties. Some teams really like to just not play in the, in the fives and and you have to when it's tens 
Okay. Does that make sense? It does, but again, I'm old-fashioned. If you want to avoid penalties, make it a silver goal. Don't make it a golden goal. Make it, if, if, you, if you score mm -hmm. during the fives, it's not over. It's who's ahead after the five yeah. that, win, that wins. I like that. That encourages offensive play, attacking play, and it keeps uh, teams from doing what you said, not yeah. playing, just basically just hanging from the, from the crossbar and trying to avoid a mistake. And, and at the very least, have some consistency across the state. There are teams Amen. last year that were not – we're not just, or the Big Nine is one of the only leagues that does penalties. A lot of divisions or conferences across the state call ties. Okay. And and there are teams that specifically play for ties, and, and yet they make playoffs and stuff like that when they've had nine ties in the season, which is not right. No, book. no. <clears throat> We're back in action now. And Mr. Reyes trying to surprise the goalkeeper, Mr. Sanchez. No dice this time. Wenatchee taking care of business from right to left. And the Eastmont Wildcats doing their thing from left to right. And now the clock ticks down on the scoreboard. It's been ticking up for the first two halves. Let's see what happens here. Zumak. Good takeaway by Eastmont, Leon, nimbly down by Wenatchee. Off to the races we go. <clears throat> and the uh, assistant referee has called that it's, that the ball went out of bounds. That the ball went out of bounds. And it was, uh, looks like Mr. Chani Vega who couldn't quite control it, Pefferman yielding on the privilege and it will be Giancarlo Cordero looks like on the throw in three minutes 38 seconds left in this first overtime period quick touch Maldonado shot across and Mr. Russell watches it sail by and wide Reyes, right footed touch. He's got some leverage. Nice job. Johnny Vega into the box. Johnny, goal, 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 goal. Beautiful touch by Alex Sanchez connecting with Johnny Vega, and Johnny Vega puts it away for the Wenatchee Panthers. Three minutes left in the first overtime period. And Wenatchee takes this one, one goal to nil. The streak continues, Matt Weiser. Fantastic finish. Just caught that line sitting a little high on their on their heels, and and um, Johnny had had the momentum coming through, and it's really hard, difficult. But that finish was just a you know a fantastic strike. And that's what I like to see, Mister. Let's see. It looks like number five and number. Seven for Wenatchee. Emmanuel Ocampo and Alex Sanchez hugging Kai, uh, Kai Pefferman. And then Kai Pefferman high-fiving uh, one of the uh, Wenatchee players. And uh, Osvaldo Sanchez is just simply devastated. He had a terrific, a tremendous scrapbook worth of game for the Eastmont Wildcats, stopped a penalty kick even. But I don't think, I don't think Levi Sheen could have stopped that <laughs> shot. I don't think Jean-Marie Faf could have stopped that shot. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic shot. Um, and, and, and you know, great ball all the way through. It was very difficult to save. Um, keeper stood on his head earlier. Both keepers have, have stood on their head, done a fantastic job in the game. And, um, I am kind of glad it didn't go to penalties because I'm not a huge fan of penalties. But, um, yeah. yeah. It was a good ending for a game that uh, finally lived up to its hype 
in the last 30 minutes of play. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we have a little post-game wrap-up from downstairs. This is NCW Live Channel. Don't go away. The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want to bet, kid? When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma of stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dick's today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel. be a member to enjoy the view and dine in style at Highlander Bar and Grill located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state-of-the-art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Call Shalane, our on-site coordinator, to schedule your special event. I chose a career at Confluent South because I wanted to help people and I knew there would be opportunities for growth. I started as a medical assistant, but quickly advanced in my career. I received five promotions in only seven years, three of those in management roles. Most organizations don't offer that type of growth. Now, as a career pathway coordinator, I let everyone know, come join Confluent South. Come grow with us. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Welcome back to Eastmont High School, where we've just witnessed Wenatchee take this one by a score of 1-0 over their arch rivals from across the river. So, Stian Moraga alongside Matt Wisen, and I tell ya, the streak continues for these, for these Panthers who really had to sweat it out in order to get a W today. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. Um, and, you know, most of the game was kind of like a, a, a sleeper a little bit. Uh, but when actually found a way again, uh, brilliant pass through, brilliant run, and, and brilliant finish. And it was exciting the last uh, several minutes. It, it got 
several um you got chippy we saw some cards come out we saw some emotions as we're always going to see and and that's what you get with this this uh, battle of the bridge you got a feel for uh, osvaldo sanchez though you know he had a terrific game he kept his team in it he saved the penalty kick for crying out loud he was having a scrapbook worthy night and it ends with a one nothing defeat uh what well, when you're a coach what do you tell a goalkeeper to bring him off the canvas and the canvas so to speak well, you know, kind of like Ted Lasso, you'll be a, be a goldfish. <laughs> I might have even said this earlier in the year. They've got to have short memories. You have to be fearless um, and you can't be thinking about what ifs. You just got to live in the in that moment. Um, the shooter's got the advantage. When they're barreling down on you, the goalkeeper can only do so much. And so just get your head, get out of your head. Um, you're going to see that over and over and over as a goalkeeper. And just keep keep your head up and do it again. Um, he he did way more good than bad tonight. Oh, so he didn't by do far. any bad. I mean, by the, far, the shooter yeah, won the game. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, you just gotta just gotta get back in the game and keep playing. Absolutely. Now, how how much uh, truth is there? Do we have him yet? We do. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, a quick interview with some of the stars of this contest. Don't go away. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance in our revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. Welcome back to Eastmont High School. We have here Alex Sanchez, number seven. Johnny Vega, 18. All right, you had the assist. Tell us about that play, please. Uh, the outside foot is just something I kind of practice on my own a lot, especially shooting the ball. But that technique, it paid off, I guess. And I was able to play Johnny a really good ball. All right, Johnny, tell us about that play, please. The press from the beginning got us the, the ball. Yeah. Gave it to BB, back to Alex. I think phenomenal ball to me. All I do is place it, and it's a team goal. Okay. Once again, I called the goal wrong. I called it for Garcia, so I'm I'm two for two this year. Excellent, excellent. Sure now, wh what's this? What's this gig that you do in the corner there when, with the ears? Uh, uh, that's Garcia. That's Garcia. Yeah, what's that? What's that about? I don't know. I maybe just a celebration signature. Yeah. Now, yeah. how important is it for you guys this season to come out of here with a win? Uh, it's always really important playing Eastmont. You always end up playing them at the end of the season, so. The more wins we can get against them, just the higher seed. Okay. How how do you guys feel about the possibility of going to penalty kicks? Was that something that you were actually actively trying to avoid, or were you okay with it? Well, we, we, if we win on penalty kicks, it's still a win. Yeah. Well, obviously we're trying to win in the beginning, but if they went to penalties, I think I think we would have been good. Matt Wisen, you sure? That as a striker, you have to love it when you see that back line stepping out, and you're in possession, and you're in that transition mode, right? Right when Alex gets the ball. When did you know you're gonna break through and get that ball in and on the clear? It was kind of when Vivi dropped it to to Sanchez, kind of curved my run, and that's how he played me the ball. And so, what were you thinking? I mean, do you, I mean, when you see the net yeah. open up, um, what's going through your head before you're blasting that shot? This is my moment. <laughs> I gotta just finish the job. Well, it was a fantastic shot, good play all around. How much stress was there coming into this game, knowing the the win streak against Eastmont? Um, I don't know if you guys have much history, but it's been quite quite a few years since Eastmont has beaten Wenatchee. Has, did that play into your minds at all coming into this game? Uh, no, not really. We kind of just it's every year. Just say it's like another game against Eastmont. We try not to make it anything bigger than it is. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. And thank you at home for watching this exciting encounter between Eastmont and Wenatchee. On behalf of everyone involved, 
I'm Matt Weisen. That's Sebastian Moraga. We'll be back. We'll be back next time, hopefully, with a little more accuracy. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.